G'day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today uh, we're going to be talking about the hope and lope trades on the end of day markets, <clears throat> which are uh, designed to catch trend reversals, hopefully without getting smashed. And this comes from uh, John Carter's book, Mastering the Trade. If you've got John's book, you'll know uh, he flipped to page 311 and he talks about the different uh, examples and criteria for the hope and lope trade. And what that stands for is high of the low period and low of the high period. So essentially, um, you're looking for a market that's making new 20-day highs or lows. Uh, this is, it's generally a rule of thumb, but you're looking for a market that's been moving strongly uh, up or down. And you want to see a definitive trend and be ready to step in when that trend's going to reverse. Now, <clears throat> you're not trying to counter trend per se and call a top or a bottom, but there's some specific criteria that that can allow you to position yourself in that mean reversion trade um, with again a measured risk and an asymmetrical risk reward hopefully so what you want to do is identify the high bar and the uptrend and um, essentially again you're looking for markets that are making new 20 day highs or lows now for me at the end of the the uh, end of day data, I look for markets that um, specifically towards the new calendar month opens and closes or the middle of the month. And so just again, one of the things that I always do is I just use horizontal support and resistance. And again, one of the things that I look for with that is I want to be able to establish a rectangular range that I can use for uh, measured move and look for asymmetrical risk rewards. So if I'm going to be taking a position somewhere up here, I want to be able to see that that market's going to give me at least a full range extension, possibly as a profit target. Now, <clears throat> so we see the market make new 20 period low, uh, highs in this particular situation as we headed into the beginning of February. And we see uh, the second bar of the month engulf the first bar which was uh, a 20 day high. This candle also formed a new 20 day high, but it closed beneath um, the first bar, the first candle of the month. So initially we want to place our stop above this candle. Um, traders may limit order the low of, of the first candle of the month, or they may go in at market. But again, you can establish your um, maximum amount of loss based on that particular candle and at a minimum you would be looking for this candle to reproduce its distance south now in this particular case it didn't do it immediately it took a few weeks actually before it uh, did the full range extension of that original range breakout um, we saw that tail spike down so the traders may have had a little bit of heat for a few weeks but nothing that really significantly penetrated against their position but as we come across into the beginning of March, again, we see an engulfment candle create a uh, high of the low period. We see a retest on the um, Tuesday and then a full breakout on the following Wednesday. So again, traders may have taken that trade even though it was a strong large candle but they can again define their maximum on a loss by one candle but the point is that in both of these cases you have the highest low and you've got a candle that closed below it or the lowest high and a candle that closed above it now in this particular case now the difference between these two markets is that again we have we have an expression and that's the the second mouse gets the cheese and what that means is that in this particular case traders who shorted the market early got would have possibly got stopped out or taken heat against their trade but it was the second mouse that was successful in seeing that market eventually fall through so we see a downtrending market forming new 20-day lows we see a candle close above that inside candle so we would call that our first mouse we see a retest so we, the market will always make two attempts at a, at a new high or a new low. Then we see the second mouse. So although it's large, some traders may have actually positioned themselves above the bear candle with a limit order and again place their stop below that candle. Or they may even add a second position 
on that follow through large bull candle. And again, um, at a minimum, looking to retest the original range that that broke out from. And in this particular case, that market was actually able to penetrate through and then resume its upward trend. So again, another example of a 20-day <clears throat> high last week where we see a close below the, the um, lowest high. And we see that the market again um, gave a second mouse. So that was on a Thursday. And that market traded strongly down on the Friday. And so Carter talks about uh, a couple of different criteria with that. But essentially uh, what I look for is I look for horizontal support and resistance levels to either have been um, broken. So again, we talk about the three types of breakouts. We talk about breakouts that will um, break out, fill more orders and continue. We talk about um, breakouts that will reverse and fail and go immediately to the other side of the range. So we can technically call that a false break. And we see markets that will <clears throat> um, break out or attempt to break out. They'll pull back in and then go into a trading range until there's another attempt at a breakout. So that's basically what the markets are always trying to do. But but hope and lope is a, um, a trade possibility setup. You can look at these um, closes below or above those high of highs of the low period or lows of the high period and then apply your other criteria to those trades to establish again if I like to see the second most I like to see uh, some kind of horizontal rectangular range that the market's going to break out of and again with that we can extrapolate potentially uh, you know two three maybe uh, two times or a return on that original range that it breaks out from in this case. But again, just looking for measured moves of ranges when the market does break out. So Hope and Lope, page 311 on John Carter's Mastering the Trade Book. Uh, it's actually a fantastic trading tool, even on the hourly. We've talked about that before on the hourly charts, but fantastic on the end of day, um, depending on how you're tracking the daily charts. Um, I've coded that into Metastock to run a scan on the 26 pairs uh, to pick it up and then I go and look at the chart manually to see if we can see evidence of a second mouse or some kind of failure pattern uh, setting up as a top or a bottom. Hopefully you got some value out of that today traders. Hope and low, high of the low period and low of the high period. And you know again that's in John Carter's book Mastering the Trade and an excellent tool for spotting uh, high possibility uh, reversals in trending markets. Have a great trading week. Stay disciplined, stay focused, and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.